Hello everyone, Nat Loves here, and today we're going to be making something like this. Essentially, we're going to be making a way where you can detect um, the edge of a line and basically not go over it. Not only that, but you can see that we are able to clamp a certain object to the end of a line and make sure it doesn't fall off. One of my friends actually asked me for help on a project and it involved this sort of a mechanic or system where a certain object could not go past a line or it couldn't go, um, or it would be it wouldn't be ideal if it went past the end of a line on either end. So he was wondering how he would make something like that. He found his own solution, but in the meantime, I found this as well. And uh, let's get right into making this. Um, essentially, what I'm going to be going over is the theoretical aspect of this and what we would have to do, like what do these numbers even mean? Um, and essentially what we're going to be using is the dot product. If you're not familiar with the dot product, I suggest you watch a YouTube video about the dot product um, First of all, but I, found, I like this video a lot. It's actually really good. Something by Khan Academy or any of these YouTube videos that come up in the first few results of the searching of dot product is A-OK -okay and will probably explain the job. Maybe not three blue, one brown. Not hating on him, but his explanations are kind of complex and not the best for game dev. I know she does a lot of game dev stuff. She's OK. Um, this is also good. Khan Academy is always amazing. But yeah, um, if you want a general understanding, you should go there first, but I can also do my simple understanding of how we could use it for our game. And essentially, to understand what the dot product is, I put together this little project, don't worry about the code, but the theoretical understanding is we have one vector, which is the one I'm controlling over here, and we have this other vector, which is the stationary one that's not moving, and the dot product is essentially the red line, or the product of the dot product, or the answer that the dot product gives us, is something we can use over here in our game to get the red line. Essentially, the dot product gets us this number. As you can see here, um, if I just interactively bring it closer to zero, or um, if I bring it close to the center, uh, you can see it becomes zero. And if I go bring it up, it's still like, it's it's a still a small number compared to like hundreds of thousands. Um, you can see it's still small. I'm actually, let me just, you can see that it's still a small number uh, when it's uh, close by, or even if it's tall. You can see that the angle matters. Um, and in fact, the dot product can be used to calculate angles, but we're not using it for angles. We're just trying to figure out how far along is this vector. So essentially, a good way to phrase it is if you took this vector that's moving and you're able to figure out how, if you're able to like impose it onto this stationary vector, how like what percentage or what like, per yeah, the percentage is a good way to think about it. What percentage of the line does it fall on? Like if a shadow was, if there was a shadow, a good way to think about it is a good way to think about it is if this if there was a sun if there was um if there was some sort of like sunlight uh some sun over here or some sort of light source and it was casting a shadow on everything below where would the shadow of this vector fall like directly overhead where would the shadow fall that's kind of what the dot product gives us and now you can see that if I have this like random position uh from this uh, origin over here I can figure out like how far along the line it is. And what happens if we if I if we clamp it? So once I go past a certain point, so now what happens if what happens if we clamp it such that it doesn't go past a certain point or past zero? So now we can like kind of always figure out where um, a certain position is relative to a line. And now what happens if we place something onto this the end of this red line? Because we have that position, we can easily figure out where it is. And what happens if we place an object there? And then we can just like easily figure out how far along the line something is or essentially we can figure out where an object is relative to the starter end of a line. And that could be used in a game to make a turret or um, or a variety of applications like a skateboard thing. Um, that's essentially what my friend was asking. How, to, how would he like make some sort of a rail? It could be used in a variety of ways. And how do we program that? Essentially over here in our regular scene, we have a mouse scene, which is um, just a way for us to visualize the mouse. Um, I think that's special. It's just a small, um, cursor so we can see where, where we are in game. Uh, we have this triangle scene, which is actually where the magic happens, but you don't need everything here. What you really want is what the follower has, but we can also go over the triangle itself. Uh, if we just hide the follower, the triangle scene itself for this project, at least you don't need this. I'm just explaining what happens. You can see over here, we have a similar, uh, similar thing that happens with the numbers where after a certain, where after a certain point, it just becomes zero and after a the other end, it just becomes the max dot product value, and in between we can figure out like a range of where the thing would be, where the follower or where the um, object along this line would be. Um, we have uh, uh, so essentially to get that sort of functionality or to get this functionality with the lines, which you may or may not need, we essentially just play around with lines to make the triangle line. You would have to first set one of the points to the first position, 
one of the points to the second position over here, one of the points to the third position, or one of the points should go back to the first position, position and then the the third point of the triangle should go back to should go to the mouse. The reason we need to send it back is because if we don't, um, if we don't, then it doesn't really form a full triangle. It just forms a triangle between these three points. But we just have to like send it back to where it started, which is what this line is for. Um, not that hard. This is just for making a triangle. Of course, you can skip it. Um, and I'll put a little text box at the beginning saying that you could skip it um, to where the actual dot product stuff happens. And obviously we have the mouse line, which is just a, um, a line from the center to where we are right now. Nothing too special there. Um, and that's essentially it. For the follower, That the thing that moves around on the line, the thing that we are actually interested in that moves left to right, we'll start, I'll start explaining how we can make that now. This is essentially all the code we need. Now it looks a little complicated. I'll break it down for you. We obviously want to get positions or we want to, in this, in the way we've set up this follower, uh, we want to get positions to where the start and the end of the line is, which is what we do over here. Not too bad right now. Then we want to get their position. So I just call the first point P and I call the second point Q. Then I wanted to find Q minus P. Um, why Q, Q minus P? Well, essentially the reason why I want Q minus P is because the reason I want Q minus P is because Q minus P essentially gets me, essentially gets me this vector. I want to calculate that vector and I want to store it in a way that I can access it later. And then, and then after I calculate Q minus P, I want to find the max dot product. What's the max dot product? Well, the max dot product is actually just taking, um, is actually just taking this line and then finding the dot product of the line that is exactly the same to it. After we got that out of the way, well, we can just dissect what this random bit of code looks like, or what this random bit of code over here is. If we remember our example at the beginning, you can see that essentially when we get our mouse position, we're getting what this thing is following my mouse. The mouse position over here is the same thing as whatever my whatever in this example over here, um, when my mouse is following, that's the same thing as mouse position. And we're going to find the Q, the Q minus P. So this is Q minus P, right? Let's just say if we're taking this code and like using a live example, we can see Q minus P dot, dot the mouse position, which is essentially coming from over here as well. As you can see, P minus get, actually, don't let me draw this. Essentially what we have over here is P, which is P over here, um, P is P. We have get under get parent global mouse position. This is the same thing as when this guy is moving around, this guy is moving around. Uh, then we have Q and P dot mouse position, Q and P dot mouse position is S. S is the same thing that is allowing us to control the length of this. And uh, we don't have P, but if we had to discuss it, um, we have Q and P over here and Q and P would be essentially this line over here like this. Um, if I just zoom out, you can see that in full force and I can just continue explaining over here. I don't really mind, but over then we have S, which is a clamp factor, um, clamp factor. Essentially what we have over here at S, uh, we're clamping the value so it doesn't exceed past this or go past this. That's what this clamp value or this clamp value or what this clamp does for us. And then we can convert it into a factor from like a percentage of zero to one. I can actually just print that out instead. Uh, we can see factor and S. Uh, if we just print them out together, you can see that um, our percentage is on the left. So you can see that as, as a percentage, when we go over here, it's one. Um, it's kind of backwards. I mean, sure, you can flip it around if you want. One minus, I believe so. You can see that when we're over here on the end, it's like 100% or one. And then when we go back over here, you can see it becomes zero, which is the dot product when the two vectors are on top of each other. So we kind of get like a percentage of where this mouse position is relative to the line, no matter like its distance or where it is. And then obviously we just, to use our, um, value s which is the product of the dot uh, dot product over here to use this value which is a scalar quantity i guess that's why i called it s we can just make a position variable and we can say hey um take this qmp multiply it by the factor which is our um uh percentage from zero to one and just add it to q what does that mean what does that mean well essentially that this line over here this line over here essentially what it means is um make a to set this final position of this red line over here, uh, essentially what we want to do is we want to take this pink vector, we want to take this pink vector, take this pink vector, but then we want to multiply it by um, 
we want to multiply it by how long the shadow of this line goes if there was a sunlight over here to put it in simple terms and we just want to make sure we have a line or we essentially want to get the position of where that shadow would fall and we can do that by multiplying it by this factor which is something we calculate with the dot product over here and essentially we get a percentage of how far along the line uh, this line has come if we were to take that shadow concept and why the reason why we add q if this is q over here um i believe you could i believe that was just with trial and error or the naming scheme but um if you added p it would go in the other direction um if we just take a look at that real quick you can see that it goes in the other direction like if you were to imagine this entire line uh just if you took this line over here i'm using my hands i don't know why um actually i'll just use my hand because it's honestly easier to explain it with my hand um but essentially if we took this line over here and we were just to we were to move it over here like that um and if we you can see that it kind of covers the same concept hopefully i get that recording i did it on my phone and then just set it back and you have your line movement of course i don't expect this video to be much practical use to anyone except for maybe a theoretical understanding of how um or except on a theoretical level understanding of how this works and when you bring it all together, of course, I'll have the project code in the description so you can play around with it, which I think is the best way to understand all of this stuff. But once we have all of that stuff down, and let me just grab these triangles. Um, okay. Uh, triangles. We can have some fun in, a, in the sense that we have our ability to track the position of certain objects in, a, in, in our world across a line. That's all there is to this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day.